Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mount Hood High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC Birthday Ball, commemorating the 247th anniversary of the founding of our Corps. Please silence your cell phones and rise as Sergeant Major Clark delivers the Marines' prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose command is over all and whose love never fails, make me aware of thy presence and obedient to thy will. Keep me true to my best self, guarding me against dishonesty in purpose and deed and helping me to live so that I can face my fellow Marines, my loved ones, and thee without shame or fear. Protect my family. Give me the will to do the work of a Marine and to accept my share of the responsibilities with vigor and enthusiasm. Grant me the courage to be proficient in my daily performance. Keep me loyal and faithful to my superiors and to the duties of my country and to the Marine Corps as they have entrusted them into me. Make me considerate of those committed to my leadership. Help me to wear my uniform with dignity and let it remind me daily of the traditions that I am required to uphold. If I am tempted, make me strong to resist. If I am inclined to doubt, steady my faith. If I should miss the mark, give me the courage to try again. Guide me with the light of truth and grant me the wisdom by which I may understand the answer to my prayer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. At this time, I'd like to introduce the senior marine instructor from Maxwell Marine Corps Junior ROTC, Major Antilli. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, faculty and administrative members, families, cadets, veterans, and servicemen and women. Welcome to our annual Cadet Marine Corps Birthday Ball. The ceremony you're going to see tonight is the same ceremony that is celebrated around the world by every Marine unit this time of year without fail. Uh, it's a special ceremony, it's a sacred ceremony, and uh, I would like to just uh, mention that we should think about all the Marines and servicemen and women who are in far-flung places right now where it's not so pleasant standing watch so that we can sit here and enjoy the freedoms of this nation and a celebration like this tonight. Uh, so this ceremony is as much for them as it is for us. Uh, it's a pleasure having you here. The uh, cadets have been rehearsing diligently. The sergeant major has put a lot of time into preparing this. So please enjoy the ceremony. Thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure having you here, and it's a pleasure celebrating our birthday with you all tonight. Thank you. As you enter this banquet hall, you may have noticed that before us tonight sends an empty chair and a single lone table draped in black, signifying all of our fallen comrades who are not with us this evening, because they have given the full measure of devotion to our country and to our beloved core. The single lighted candle reminds us of the flame of eternal life and that the memory of our fallen comrades will be with us always. The purple heart medal is displayed to reflect the shedding of blood and the ebb of life in battle. The identification tags are blank. Yet, they could bear the name of any of us here tonight. Only a few Americans chose the dangerous and necessary work of fighting our nation's enemies. As a consequence of that choice, some have paid the ultimate price, joining the honor roll of heroes who built the noble legacy of our Corps. For those of us who carry on that legacy, it is our obligation to honor those fallen Marines. As Marines gather in celebration of our history, we gather in the shadows of greatness. Though our fallen can no longer participate in our traditions, they will always be a part of us and who we are. Please rise for a moment of silence for our fallen comrades. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, a video message from the Commandant and Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps.
you're a warrior and you're leading warriors and you're about to step into battle, one of the key things you must have is an absolute confidence because that radiates out of you. You're giving to them the warrior spirit. Semper Fidelis means that if you are a foe before me, I will not quit until you fall. awake at night? Nothing. And I keep other people awake at night. The Marine just plain considers himself a better soldier than anybody else. Marines have never given anyone any reason to think differently. We are unique. Not just among our fellow citizens, but among all those who defend our nation. We are defined by our warfighting ethos, our intangible warrior spirit that moves us forward into any battle, in any domain, and binds us not only to the Marine on our left and right, but to all Marines who came before us. Current events around the world show us that peace is far from guaranteed. America's adversaries continue to present an ever-evolving threat to our nation's prosperity and security. Today, almost 31,000 Marines are forward deployed or stationed abroad. In every theater, in every time and place, standing ready to confront those who would do our nation harm. The American strength is based upon the fabric of all of the different cultures and people that come to it. And that applies on the battlefield, and I've seen that there. That is an essence of the power of the American fighting spirit. For 247 years, capable and determined adversaries have tested the Marine Corps. The enemy knows when they see that EGA and they see a real Marine hooked to that EGA, that could be a serious situation. On each occasion, our forebears gave them reason to fear and respect the title United States Marine. Our adversaries have always had a choice. Abandon their aggressions or stand and fight. Some chose to fight and were destroyed. Today, our adversaries still have a choice. And they know if they choose to fight, they will be defeated. From the wheat fields of Bella Wood, to the volcanic sands of Iwo Jima, to the crowded streets of Way City, or Ramadi. Marines prove time and time again they will claim victory on any battlefield. Our mission was stay on the compound. Well, things happen, situations change, and we got a call that gunny from the Marine Security Guard Force the uh, RSO and their driver were involved in a vehicle accident. We were driven out to the crash site. Liberian rebels armed to the teeth with anything that they had. We had to uh, do a makeshift backboard and stabilized them and got all of our personnel. You're trained for it, but you know, there's variables in there that you could never prepare for. And so you just go with it. And while battlefields and technologies change, the qualities of a Marine are timeless. Grit, strength, boldness, discipline, initiative, adaptability, honor, 
courage and commitment. It would be impossible for me to say with any amount of confidence that I would be where and who I am today if I didn't have the foundation of being a Marine. The Marine Corps and how it shapes us and the history of courage and sacrifice that we fill the shoes of and that we follow. Um, it's almost impossible to not continue on and to not want to become the best version of yourself personally, but professionally as a Marine as well. These qualities were birthed by the legacy of the old breed. Those like Herschel Woody Williams. He really just was a huge inspiration growing up. I loved warrior figures and he was the main one. It's the legacy of the Marines who came before us and of our Marines today. When the nation calls, we answer. As America's premier crisis response force, Marines thrive in chaotic situations where friction is highest. We have to always understand that there's always been troops on the deck taking the fight to the enemy on their distant lands. We are proud to be first to fight, and we are ready today and tomorrow. Standing ready with undying devotion to the court, to the mission, and to each other. Our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. In 2001, when our nation was still reeling from the September 11th terrorist attacks, Marines aboard the USS Peleliu and the USS Bataan came from the sea and launched the longest amphibious raid in history. We came 370 miles from the sea, 25 aircraft. During one period of darkness, we inserted 400 Marines over that distance. We did what we say that we do. We did it in an expeditionary manner. We did it from the ships. And despite uh, a lot of risk, we did it successfully. The same war fighting spirit that secures our victory in combat comes from our ability to innovate, to iterate, to adapt. And we find inspiration in each other. I remember my first cat shot in an F-18 into a combat zone. And that was a whirlwind of emotions, right? You're ready to go, you've practiced, you're trained, but you're a little bit nervous. That nervousness though I think is good, right? It keeps you sharp. She's more than an astronaut. She is a Marine whose warfighter ethos shapes who she is. A battle-tested warrior with 47 combat missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. When I'm sitting on top of that rocket and they start to load the prop and it starts to shake and rumble, I hope that I feel a little bit nervous, it keeps me sharp. I hope though that I have this calmness knowing that I'm trained, my crew is trained, we are ready to go. And I hope that the second that we launch from planet Earth, that all just disappears and we're in the moment. While those who threaten our nation remain, America sleeps well at night knowing the future will be no different. Because the Marines are always standing ready. Across the force, we continue to innovate and experiment in preparation for the future fight. Where we will fight might be uncertain, but we prepare for uncertainty. When called, we will fight and we will win. Today, tomorrow, and in the future. These victories are not won because of our technology or our equipment, but because of all of you. Because of everything you do, every day, to remain the best trained, most professional, most ready force in the world. That has not changed. We are warfighters first and always. If the call comes today to go into combat, we will win. But that's no excuse not to be better tomorrow. It is the individual Marines who make up the team. They are the decisive advantage. Whether in combat or in competition, training our future Marines in recruit training, or preparing to deploy on one of our Marine Expeditionary Units, we have always adapted to the changing character of war. Why we fight and why we win is unchanged. It is our ethos our character, and our unapologetic resolve to be the most capable and most lethal fighting force in the world. Marines, 
you are writing the next chapter of our Corps. Our legacy rests upon your shoulders, and I'm confident you will meet the task. Simba Fidelis, happy, happy birthday, birthday, Marines. Please rise for the entry of the official party and the guest of honor, and remain standing for the march out of the colors, the singing of our national anthem, and the entry of the traditional birthday cake.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On November 1st, 1921, John A. Lejeune, 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, directed that a reminder of the honorable service of the Corps be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. Since that day, the men and women of our Corps have continued to distinguish themselves on many battlefields and foreign shores, in war and peace. On this birthday of the Corps, therefore, in recognition of the will of the 13th Commandant, a reminder of the Corps' honorable service is published as follows. On November 1st, 1921, John A. Lejeune, 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps, directed that a reminder of the honorable service of the Corps be published by every command to all Marines throughout the globe on the birthday of the Corps. Since that day, Marines have continued to distinguish themselves on many battlefields and foreign shores, in war and peace. On this birthday of the Corps, therefore, in compliance with the will of the 13th Commandant, Article 38, United States Marine Corps Manual, Edition 1921, is republished as follows. On November 10, 1775, a Corps of Marines was created by a resolution of Continental Congress. Since that date, many thousand men have borne the name Marine. In memory of them, it is fitting that we who are Marines should commemorate the birthday of our Corps by calling to mind the glories of its long and illustrious history. The record of our Corps is one which will bear comparison with that of the most famous military organizations in the world's history. During 90 of the first 146 years of its existence, the Marine Corps has been in action against the nation's foes. From the Battle of Trenton to the Argonne, Marines have won foremost honors in war, and in the long eras of tranquility at home, generation of generation after of Marines have grown gray in war in both hemispheres, and in every corner of the seven seas, that our country and its citizens might enjoy peace and security. In every battle and skirmish since the birth of our Corps, Marines have acquitted themselves with the greatest distinction, winning new honors on each occasion, until the term Marine has come to signify all that is highest in military efficiency and soldierly virtue. This high name of distinction and soldierly repute we who are Marines today have received from those who have preceded us in the Corps. With it, we have also received from them the eternal spirit which has animated our Corps from generation to generation and has been the distinguishing mark of Marines in every age. So long as that spirit continues to flourish, Marines will be found equal to every emergency in the future as they have been in the past. And the men of our nation will regard us as worthy successors to the long line of illustrious men who have served us soldiers of the sea since the founding of the Corps. J. A. Lejeune, Major General, United States Marine Corps. 13th Commandant of the Marine Corps. The timeless message of our 13th Commandant has left its mark in the hearts and minds of all Marines, past and present. By deed and act, from Bellawood to the Oregon, from Guadalcanal to Iwo Jima, from Incheon to the Korean Armistice, from the hard fights in Vietnam to Desert Shield, Desert Storm, to this country's longest wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and in hundreds of other places where Marines have continued to distinguish themselves. Marines have continued to optimize those qualities, which are their legacy. The success which the men and women who have earned the title Marine have achieved in combat and the faith they have borne in peace will endure forever. The Commandant and our many friends have added their hearty praise and congratulations on this, our 247th birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, it is customary at Marine Corps birthday celebrations worldwide for Marines to cut a traditional cake in celebration of the birth of our illustrious Corps. It is tradition to offer the first piece of cake to the guest of honor as a sign of respect and to recognize their contribution to our JRTC program and to the Marine Corps. The next piece is given to the oldest and youngest cadet in the ceremony. 
symbolizing the experience and the youthful spirit that is the hallmark of our core. The oldest cadet in this ceremony is Cadet Staff Sergeant Jonathan Dubon. He was born December 3, 2003. The passing of the cake, from the oldest cadet to the youngest cadet, symbolizes the passing of history and traditions to the next generation. The youngest cadet in the ceremony is Cadet Private First Class, Alexis Dennington. She was born on February 25, 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the tying of the colors and the march off of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the Marines hymn.
Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding officer at Mount Jordan High School Marine Corps Junior ROTC, Cadet Captain Caitlin State. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a privilege to be able to speak with you guys today. And I uh, am this year's Cadet Company Commander. And it is such an honor to be here with you today. But not only that, it is such an incredible honor to be able to be with such a distinguished crowd. So before we begin, if you are an active duty or retired military, a first responder, a teacher, or a public official, please stand so we can recognize your incredible sacrifice to our community and our country. extraordinary Marines in the room. Happy birthday. It is your day and I speak for our entire Cadet Corps when I express how thankful we are to be a part of the ceremony to honor you all as well as every veteran who has served our country. Thank you. To the parents, guardians, and friends in the audience, thank you for being here today. Thank you for every event watched, every time you have come to an early morning or late night practice, for all the support you have provided to your son or daughter in every facet of this program. Your role is more important than you could ever know. Thank you. To Mount Juliet High School and its administrative team, thank you. JRTC would not be able to survive without this school's incredible support and endorsement. Thank you. To our instructors, Sergeant Major Clark and Major Antilli, thank you would be a vast understatement of the gratitude that we have for what I believe to be your success and the insurmountable task of teaching us students each day. We are definitely not an easy group of students to teach all the time, so thank you for believing and investing in us in a way like none other. It is certainly, in the case of my life, the memories, the lessons, and most of all the development that has taken place and either originated or been facilitated by you gentlemen has had and will always have an incredible and lifelong impact on my life as well as every single one of your students. So thank you. To our cadet staff members, thank you for your time. You have all had such an impressive vision throughout this year and a willingness to constantly improve this program. I am so grateful for your relentless spirit and enthusiasm to always educate, mentor, and lead your fellow cadets. Thank you. To all my cadets, thank you. You are such an incredible group of students and while I have learned so much from Sergeant Major and Major Antilly, I learn more from you all. I really do. There's a quote that I came across and I wanted to share with you all. It states that if you inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. And when I look at this Corps of Cadets, I can affirm that you all are a group of young leaders because you inspire me. So thank you. So now, I ask my freshmen, my sophomores, and my juniors that you take advantage of all the time you have left in high school. It goes by so fast. You'll blink and you'll be here. So I encourage you to not wait to make a change or to take on a leadership billet and a leadership role until your senior year. Don't wait. Take initiative to build bridges both inside and outside of this program. This program and this school are ultimately there for you. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it because in doing so, you will begin to be equipped to lead this next generation to face the challenges that will arise in your future. And seniors, our time together is growing thin. Thanks for always being there for me since day one. I believe we have been able to make a true family out of this program. Remember that it is never too late to give back to this program which has given so much to us for so long. Let us be vigilant to train up those who will bear the torch that has been passed down, but not for our own legacy or for our own glory, but so that for the classes of cadets that they may reap the benefits that we know this program can provide them. So thank you. Thank you all. And I'm excited to see where this program will go in this next year and many years following. And now, let us continue to uphold 247 years of tradition this evening in celebration of the United States Marine Corps Birthday Ball. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest of honor, Jordan C. 
Jordan C. served in the Marine Corps JROTC program here at Mount Juliet High School. He graduated in 2015 after serving in several billets during his time in the program. He is currently working as a leasing consultant for Glass Creek Apartments. He is also a volunteer coach for the Wilson County youth basketball team, the B2 B Ballers. This wonderful team of 15 to 18 year olds has won three championships. Mr. C has also helped several of these youngsters earn athletic scholarships for college. Also, he just started his own nonprofit called Johnny's and Johnny's to help benefit the youth of our community in Mount Juliet. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for our guest of honor, Jordan C. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's having a blessed night. I just want to say I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Major, Sergeant Major, and RTC Cadets for having me. Y'all could have picked anyone else, so thank you again. It feels good to be back at my alma mater. Had a lot of good memories and lesson learned. As I look back and I see how the cadets put this birthday ball together, it reminded me how much responsibility this program has taught me. I remember in my second year in the program, I was the S4, also known as the, the logistics officer in charge of the inventory. Our gunning at the time gave me a test, but I didn't catch on until it was too late. He asked me how many boots and uniform sets we had. I gave him a random number at the time, not knowing it was going to catch up to me. When it was time to pass up the uniforms, I was short four uniforms and eight boots. I went to tell Gunny that we were short, and he looked at me and said, I know. It's your responsibility to know what comes in and out. Next time, I expect the exact count and nothing less. Not only did he test my responsibility, but he tested my integrity. From that point on, I knew I had to earn Gunny's trust. So I made sure to know what was coming and leaving that inventory. Throughout my years in this program, I experienced up and downs. I was promoted and demoted. I was a second lieutenant on the way to company commander, made some wrong decisions, and was demoted back down to sergeant. Major Antilly made sure to hit me where it hurt. I knew he was going to discipline me, but I didn't think it would be my second lieutenant rank. He told me, this isn't the end. You can still finish your senior year with a good rank. I didn't understand, I didn't understand at the time, I didn't understand at the time, but he was testing me to see if I was gonna give up or if I was gonna, if, or if I was gonna go to work and earn my rank back. Most cadets got demoted, most cadets who got demoted in my junior year either quit their RTC program or just didn't give full effort anymore. I chose to give it my all because I knew giving up was not an option for me, nor did I want to let Major or my parents down. I ended up finishing my senior year as the company's first sergeant. I chose this story because at the time, I thought RTC was over for me, but it was one of my greatest failures. Mia Hamm, a retired professional American soccer player, one said, failure happens all the time. It happens every day in practice. What makes you better is how you react. So to each cadet, no matter what you're going through in life or in ROTC, just know that failures are going to happen. It is how you respond to that failure that really matters. Just remember that each failure you have is just a storm and it's only temporary. Each one of my failures, and trust me, I've had a lot, has made me who I am today. I'm not perfect by any means, and I also need to work harder. It's about having that fighting spirit no matter what life throws at you and never giving up. The Marine Corps has been around for 247 years and has never let this country down. They made sure to keep that fighting spirit, even when the odds were against them. Lieutenant General James Matty, the commander of the U.S. Marine Corps Force Central Command, once said, Marines don't know how to spell the word defeat. Cadets, if we can all have that same mindset as Lieutenant James Matty going forward, then no failure should ever hold us back. 
All we must do is keep that fighting spirit. Cadets, what I can tell you is that you're at the right place at the right time. Major Antilly, Sergeant Major Clark, and the instructors before them made sure that you all have the principles to, to succeed in the next chapter. I know sometimes it may not feel like it, but I promise you they want your best interest at heart. If Major didn't discipline me and just gave me a slap on the wrist because I was his favorite cadet, don't let him lie to y'all. I would not be the person who I am today, or I wouldn't have, or it would have taken me longer, or I would not be giving this speech today. So cadets, when you're in uniform and out of uniform, have a strong backbone and posture, because it's a privilege to be in this program. If you're still here, then you must be doing something right, or major, and sergeant major sees something in you. Please cadets, don't take this program for granted. Each and every one of you are destined for greatness. This ROTC program is building you to become future leaders of this generation. Even if you don't see yourself as a leader, there's a leader inside of you. Trust me, I didn't see myself as a leader until I faced adversity. Steve Harvey once said, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. Cadets, I challenge you today to find a leader inside of you. If you have found a leader inside of you, help your fellow cadet find a leader inside of them. I have so much respect for this ROTC program because it helps shape young men and women to be the best versions of themselves. Cadets, just remember when it gets tough, put one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. Your worst failures are your greatest lesson. Keep that fighting spirit no matter what life throws at you. Only you can stop you. Super fly, thanks for having me. God bless. Appreciation. We would like to present the guest of honor with a gift from the cadets of our Marine Corps Junior ROTC program. Thank you. Thank you. It really means a lot. Mr. Ray Rinder, who is the Deputy District Director for Congressman John Rose, our Wilson County faculty, our Mount Juliet High School faculty members, local law enforcement, first responders, military recruiters, and veterans. Thank you for attending this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as our cadets sing the Marines hymn.
please be seated. At this time, Sergeant Major Clark will deliver our closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, although this concludes the formal ceremony, I would like to ask that we hang out for a little while, build camaraderie, encourage one another to hang out and socialize, to build esprit de corps, to encourage one another to spend this time together to adopt, if we haven't already, or retain all of those traits and principles that our guest speaker and our company commander and our cadet staff have mentioned tonight. It's time to cut a run. It's trying to drink a few sodas and get just a little bit stupid. So, may God bless the United States of America, success to her Marines, and happy 247th birthday, cadets. Hey, Russ! Hey, Russ!